got some uh, breakfast from Wendy's today. Never had breakfast from Wendy's in my whole life, so uh, this should be interesting. I got the uh, the Baconator. I got some, uh, looks like potato wedges and some French toast. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, should be interesting. And I got a, a large double-double coffee. So before I begin, before I start eating, I got some shout outs. Okay. Uh, my first one, what's good, Omi? Who this person lives in California. I guess they want me to mention that. So what's good, Omi? Shout out to you. Fly guy, Oli. Uh, looks like fly guy, Oli. Uh, Ole, Oli, Oli. I think fly guy, Oli. And M. Borden B. Uh, this person wanted a German shout out. So. Important be a big German shout out to you, my friend, and a big shout out to the rest of you as well. So, those are the shout outs. So, like I said, I got some uh, interesting stuff here. I'll try some of these potato wedges first. Wrong turns, we found the boat. It was down at the government dock about eight miles. 
miles out of town. So, I always like to do a drive-by, find out where things are, so I'm not scrambling first thing in the morning. and uh, remote fishing villages and logging camps, that sort of thing. Dropping off supplies, you know. Drop off a lot of water, a lot of food, just supplies like that, you know. Um, they can carry about 70 tons of cargo and about 100 passengers. It's about 136 feet long and its average cruising speed is about 12 knots, so it goes along at a pretty good clip. So now that the Nootka Sound Inlet, where we were going, we we're going to a place called Friendly Cove. Now, uh, back around uh, the new millennium, around 2000, 2001, there was a uh, orphaned orca, a killer whale showed up, and they named it Luna. And this whale became quite well known. They actually made some documentaries about it and some movies. It was on the, the news a lot, but it became too friendly with people was always by itself, it was a loner, and they figured that, you know, it was orphaned because it was so young and everything, and uh, it was always, you know, it would always come right up to your boat and this sort of thing, and you could pet it and whatever, and, you know, people were urged to stay away from it, but, you know, if you're out there fishing, this thing comes up to your boat and whatever, it's hard to, you know, ignore that, um, but it, would, it was always going along the upchuck boat, the one that we rode on, it would always, you know, go along with that, you know, and side by side and it liked that boat apparently because it could easily outrun it and it could keep up with it no problem so just before we left to get on the boat oh unfortunately that whale I, I missed a big part of the story that whale was accidentally killed by a, uh, a tugboat he got hit by the prop I think around 2006 so that left a lot of people heartbroken it was very because Luna was uh, a real ambassador to that area, you know, kind of like a local celebrity. So, 
watch that kept us uh, amused while we're waiting to, for the uh, the whistle to blow and for us to uh, depart the dock. So we watched that. There was the the boom boats in the water, and they were uh, you know sorting all the bundles of logs out and that sort of thing. And that reminded me of uh, the job I used to do, except the when I worked uh, in the the booming grounds, the the, the log dump uh, machine was like a big crane, an A-frame, would pick the logs up and dump them in the water. At this dry land sort, they just slide down into the water, and then the boom boat sorts them out into a boom. So anyways, like I said, that kept us amused for, for quite some time. Very interesting to watch. So just before we started to depart, one of the ladies who was... Uh, Registering us for our, our ride, came out and she was had this bubble maker. She was blowing a bunch of bubbles out there. She had this big wand with, you know, with, with all this uh, soap and just making all these bubbles. It was kind of a nice send off, kind of interesting. So that was that was fun. So uh, the the ride we left at ten and we're going to arrive at Friendly Cove at twelve thirty. Stay at Friendly Cove for three hours and then come back and be back at around five thirty. So, we are definitely looking forward to all of this. So, we left on time. Now, this boat um, is very comfortable. You know, you can sit upstairs, you can, like where it's open, you can go down below into the galley area and it's sheltered. And there's tables you can eat down there. Now, it's been really hot lately, but on the east coast of the island, it can sometimes be 10 degrees lower than anywhere else. And even though it was warm, it was windy. So it's a good thing I brought my jacket because it was really, really windy. Just gonna bring this a bit closer like that. sandwich. So there it is. It's got bacon and egg on there. It's quite big. And 
sausage. You got sausage on there, sausage patty. So it looks looks quite interesting. wildlife um, you know when you're uh, doing one of these cruises um, we did see some eagles and some of uh, this huge eagles nest this thing must have been four feet in diameter wow it was huge saw lots of walrus and uh, seals or not walrus sea lions and seals and um, otters um, that sort of thing was hoping to see some bears never saw any bears um, but I, we did have a treat that I'll share with you at the getting close to the end of this video. Very unexpected treat. Actually, an, an indigenous lady who was standing behind me watching it said, What a gift. What a gift. And it was a gift. It really was something to see. And I'll, I'll share that with you a little bit later. There's a galley on this boat. They make really good chili. Uh, you can have chili with or without a bun. They have good cookies and soup, different types of soup and sandwiches. Uh, chocolate bars, muffins, good coffee and tea, hot chocolate, but it's cash only. surprised this guy was, you know, uh, much, much over 30, you know, I don't know if he's about 32 or something, but he's, he's the captain of this uh, boat, and he lets you come into the wheelhouse and, and take pictures and chat, he's a very, very nice guy. The crew was very friendly, I chatted with everybody on there, you know, it'd be so interesting to work on a boat like that, you know, just for maybe one season or something. You know, not at my age, but when I was younger. That's a good sandwich. The only way I could think of improving that would be to change the button up a little bit. and he has a shop there and he, uh, he does lots of carvings he's got some beautiful work just beautiful he's a lovely man very interesting very funny very nice guy to talk to but a real artist well let me tell you
this at Sanford, the carver. We visited with him for a while. Then we went up to the church. And the church is used mostly now for first spiritual um, events and that sort of thing, and lectures and talks, and you know stuff like that. And there was um, uh, an indigenous elder, and she was there doing a talk, so we listened for a while. That was quite interesting, and, and it was it was pretty just amazing to visit with all these people who uh, work there and live there. Everybody was just so wonderful. man I couldn't get over it it was just beautiful beach they call it Pebble Beach I'm not really sure if that's a real name but some people refer to it as, the, the, as Pebble Beach but all the rocks are like river rocks they're just so smooth almost like they're polished some of them kind of are. You know, there we just looked at all the rocks, picked them up, and just you know, just couldn't go over how beautiful some of them were. And um, when the the waves come in. sandwich. Like I said, if they could change that, change that bun to a muffin or something, it'd be so much better. So this is the little treat that I had to share with you. We're walking along. Okay, it's down looking at rocks and everything. And there's a few people on the beach, not too many. And then just says, wow, what is that? We look up. And we see these fins. Like, well, couldn't believe it. We realized right away it was a whale. saw this couple who were about in their 70s. They 
that set up. A tripod had their camera on there, and they, they sat there about two weeks, apparently, and then built a little driftwood shelter. They were camping there waiting for the whales to show up, so I don't know if they ever did, but here we are, walk along this beach, and unexpectedly, this whale, now my niece, told me it was a great whale. She saw my video, and I would take her word for it, because she's a... Uh, She loves whales. She really likes the orcas. So I trust her. Her word. But when we're watching this whale, that's what that indigenous lady who was standing behind me. She put her hands out and says, What a gift. What a gift. You know. And it was, it was just a that's what it felt like a gift. Because we saw this thing just come in there, just out of the blue, and it was going back and forth to go down the beach about three or three or four hundred feet, and turn around, and come back. You know, each time we thought, "What's well, it's gone," but then it would appear out the, the deep water again, start way down that end, and start slowly making its way back. Every once in a while, it would blow uh, through its blowhole, you know, and then uh, just scratching itself, and it was just something to see. Like, seeing that. It was just such a treat. Such a beautiful cove. A friendly cove is just, you know, there's a totem there with his hands stretched out. That's the, that means welcome. You know, it's, it's a way of welcoming people. There's a really old graveyard. That's off limits. there from well over 100 years ago. I'm sure there's some that are more than that, but the ones that were visible were from over 100 years ago. I think one more recent ones I saw was from about 1958 or something. But there's a lake. I've walked down the lake and there's a young girl swimming born and raised in uh, Hawaii. I forget which island. I can't remember now. She told me about Kauai. I can't remember. But she, um, she was swimming in the lakes. It was just beautiful. And I felt the water was so warm and so nice. Both had everything. That Wendy's makes good coffee. My mom likes Wendy's and Linda's dad likes Wendy's. I think Wendy's kind of projects a uh, kind of a wholesome image, you know. You know, the little girl with the big tails and all that. And I think a lot of So anyways, we 
we checked on everything we could on on friendly uh, cove we didn't go up to the lighthouse had we not seen that whale we would have but we spent a lot of time watching that whale to finally left and to me that was just the greatest thing ever like it was just such a lots of them and she'd done about seven or eight different trails but the Nuka trail she'd done seven times she named off all these trails I'd never heard of and astonishingly when the boat started started leaving Friendly Cove you know we had to say goodbye to Friendly Cove it's starting to sail away still go with something that's done before at least for the first time then did I know a couple she wanted to do the west coast trail years ago with her husband so she put on a backpack that weighed about 35 or 40 pounds and every night she'd walk around the neighborhood developing her core muscle and just getting you know used to it and back 
because you need uh, you need good footwear and everything else. But we started heading back. Beautiful ride going back. The sun was uh, getting a bit low in the sky, you know. This is probably around four o'clock where heading back down the inlet. That serves good. And it's just so nice, you know, reflecting on the day. And it's kind of weird because going back, the trip didn't seem as long as when we're going up. But it was just so wonderful. Everybody was just so almost on a high, you know, almost on a high because um, it was so relaxing and so nice. I just loved it. So as we got closer, we could see the dock up ahead. And of course, we got to start getting closer. And even though it was quite sunny and everything, it wasn't cold. I said, just really windy on those channels. Really very windy. It's almost a turquoise. Surrounded by mountains. There's a lot of fishing. You know, um, not just commercial fishing, but uh, sport fishing, you know, charters, that sort of thing. It's a beautiful area. there. The drive through was quite busy. I didn't walk out the drive through because I've never had breakfast in Wendy's before. I wanted to be able to have time to study the menu and maybe ask a question or two. Which you can't always do when you go through a drive through So I just went in. There was only one other person in there. Somebody came in after me. So I just Part my food to go, I guess I was able to take my time and look at the menu. But there's a young man, he was just starting. I felt so sorry for him. He just stood there so confused. And you know, the training is very, very hectic. You know, you just like kind of, kind of training as you go. And I felt sorry for him. I just gave him some words of encouragement and said, You know, do your best, young fellow. But I, I've been there. I'll have our first day of the job at some point. But uh, I'm sure you'll do fine. That was a good breakfast. A very good breakfast. I liked it. Oh, yeah. Here's little Wendy.
So anyways, when that was over, we got back around 5.30. By the time we docked, got off the boat, it was about 5.45, thereabouts. Hopped in the car, drove to Campbell River, took about an hour and a half, got to Campbell River, gassed up, used the washroom, and uh, headed back home, headed back to Nanaimo. Excuse me. And it's such a nice drive just going back. Like I said, that new highway they built about 25 years ago is not at all scenic at all. The, because it's the end of that highway, but at least you can just zip along. You know, like I said, at 110 kilometers or faster if you want. You know, for the sake of gas mileage and being comfortable, I just stayed at 110. But the old highway goes along the water. It's way more scenic. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful drive, but takes a long time and that's you know Linda and I drove up that way um, it was on Father's Day in June Father's Day we drove up there we had a meal at a nice restaurant there and it's such a beautiful drive going up there you know because it's just uh, it's so scenic and it's hardly busy anymore it used to be really busy because it was you know traffic would be backed up because it's just two lanes and you know, but it's it's a beautiful drive very scenic but so much slower mother-in-law she didn't like that that um, of the scenic highway because always took too long she lived in Courtney and that was a bit more than an hour's drive down to where we live in Nanaimo and she said you know by the time they build that highway I'll be dead because she knew they're gonna build a new inland highway that'd be much faster and sure enough um, you know I think less than a year after she passed away So she never did get a, get a chance to drive on it. But down. Uh, well. Oh, that was good. It was so nice sharing this with you. You know, I love your comments, my friends. And uh, shout outs. If I don't get your shout out right away, that's because I pre date my, uh, pre record my videos at a time. So it may be a week or 10 days before you hear, hear your shout out. And I, if I don't answer your comments right away, it's because, you know, I'm, I'm busy doing something, Linda and I, because it's summertime, we like to do some day trips and some overnighters and try and get away for a couple of days. So that's the reason. But, you know, if you've been following my channel, you know, I always do my best to respond to comments and, and uh, accommodate shout outs. Uh, so anyways, my friends, that's my video. I hope you enjoyed my video. And 